Mtu wangu wa zamani umeze kwa kabisa nimekuwa kiumbe kipendani ya Yesu moyo ni mwangu kweli na burudi kanimekuwa Hello Mary 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 like me it is yet another hot debate that has taken place somewhere else and I have just decided to bring it here today. If you know that you are a married man and a married woman, watch this. And if you know that you are still single, this is out of you. It is beyond you. Never, never watch this video. Uh, or, or else if you watched it, assume that you did not watch Close your ears, close your eyes, don't see, assume you didn't hear anything. Well, to the married people, I'm back to you. Did you know that when God created Adam and Eve, he was having an idea of one man, one wife? One man and one wife. Leave about the, the, the fornicators, those who are not married. I'm not talking about you. I will talk about that in another video. But today, I want to answer a question. When I go out severally to, to do an, a street evangelist, by the way, I'm a street evangelist. When I go there to evangelize in the world and also in crusades, in many meetings, I constantly find a challenge that many married people are facing. And today, I've just decided to go through one. And the one that I want to talk about today is why... Uh, married men cheating well i'm not saying that men are the only people who are cheating and you that is viewing this video you have a better idea are you faithful to your marriage are you only sleeping with your own wife or even your own husband god is the judge i'm not judging you but i want to give you just a clear a clear uh, word of testimony in the bible or how, uh, the reason why many men are cheaters I am not saying that all men are cheaters, like many women would say it. But I am just saying that according to many researches that I have uh, stumbled upon in the social network, I have found out that many men are cheaters. Why? They constantly like side chicks, side businesses, or even slay queens, if you can call them that. Or maybe another woman outside there, they rent a house for them, they give them good things. But they still come back to their first women, their first wives. Now this is what the Bible says about unfaithfulness in marriages, especially why are men cheating? I will talk about why women cheat also in another video. But today I'm talking about men like me. Why are you cheating in your marriage? You know what? brought you to that marriage and you you know the reason why you went to that side chick but now i'm asking a question why do you think you're cheating well i want the bible to answer you well i'm not saying that i'm too faithful but i'll tell you the source of my faithfulness now let's turn to our bibles let's turn to our bibles i'm going to give eight points eight points and reasons why men cheat outside. While at, at some point I even thought that it was not their fault. Maybe you're also guilty a woman who is married. Maybe you're not treating your husband well. Let us concentrate and hear what the Bible says. And I'm going to dwell so much in the book of Proverbs. Did you know who wrote the Proverbs? By the way, we need to know his history. Why is, has he written so much about unfaithfulness? Solomon wrote it. And remember that uh, the history of Solomon is that he had 300 wives and 700 concubines. So when he's writing this to us, then it means he's writing it out of experience, number one. Number two, God used him because he had a better experience on this. And that's the reason why he has written it. Welcome as we study this together in the Bible. Deep and deeper in the Bible, it is written. Well, I know that there are certain words I'm going to use that he used that many people would consider so vulgar because I had, I had given this someone in a crusade somewhere. But they are the rightful words to use. Remember, he was the, the wisest of all. Now let's turn to our Bibles. Reason number one. 
in the book of Proverbs 9, verse 17. In the book of Proverbs 9, verse 17, the Bible says, Stolen waters are sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. <laughs> oh, a man like me. The Bible has just said that the stolen waters are sweet, and the bread eaten in secret is pleasant. That is the reason why men are cheating. When they, for example, when they are walking in the streets, they see a beautifully dressed woman, or even a girl, or even a lady, who is built in a very wonderful way. God took his time building her. And I used, the service used this words that they are fearfully and wonderfully made. Well, I think that this was applied, or can only be applied to women. Oh, oh, I'm not serious about that. But I just wanted to know. I, know. I want us to know the reason why they're cheating. Because the bread eaten in secret is pleasant, and the, the stolen waters are sweet. Now, when you're married, stealing water is like going for a side business or, or entertaining another person apart from your rightful wife. Yes. And what is the Bible directive? Are you allowed to, to steal some water or you stick to your well? Let us turn to the book of, in the same same point, let us turn to the book of Proverbs, the same same Proverbs 5 verse 15. Now see this. Now see this. In the book of Proverbs 5 verse 15. God is talking to us like this, in this manner. Drink waters out of thy own cistern and running waters out of thy own well. Let them be only thy own water, thy own, and not strangers with thee. 18. Let thy fountain be blessed, and rejoice with the, with the wife of thy youth. Now, we are finding, we are figuring out here that the stolen water that the Bible was talking about was referring to a woman because here we are finding that drinking from your cistern means the wife of your youth which means your own wife now you know so number one reason why many men are cheating today it is because the stolen waters are sweet not the water from your found from your cistern the wife you have married you have legally married that is, the, that is the water, the meaning of the water from your system. And the stolen water, you call them slay queen or a side chick. Because men believe that the stolen waters are sweet. <laughs> and bread eaten in secret are also pleasant. So now we know. Point number one, curiosity. They want to find out more what lies inside that skirt. They always want to find out why that boob is so round. And that is the curiosity that the devil is using today to deceive many men that the women outside there are better than their women that they have married. That is the language of the wise man. That the stolen waters are sweet or the bread eaten in secret are sweet. Point number two. Proverbs 22 verse 14. Proverbs 22, verse 14. The mouth, the Bible says, The mouth of a strange woman is a deep pit. He that abhorreth of the Lord shall fall therein. Them that hate God shall fall into that pit. You know, if you get, you just, you, you just, get distracted because of your curiosity you go to test those those waters that are stolen it is entering into a deep pit that getting out is not a, is not easy unless somebody who has a lot of power who can bring you up through a rope or maybe using a ladder can help you out of that pit my brother, if you are married, stick to your woman. Because the one that curiosity tells you that is better is just a deep pit. It is not good for you. It is just an excitement. The wife of your youth is the wife that you loved and you married. 
Point number three. Point number three. Proverbs 6 verse 26. Proverbs 6 verse 26. Listen. For by means of her wurish, a wurish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread and adulteress will hunt the precious life. So we are finding two things here. We are finding two things. By means of a warish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. Through their wudom, them that are there, you call them slay queens. They have a, pre, a piece of bread to offer you. Remember, the first verse that we studied was Proverbs 9.17, which was saying that the stolen waters are sweet and bread eaten in secret. Then it means that the bread that was eaten in secret, that was pleasant, which was we found out to be a lie, is the bread that these people offer. Then it means that maybe a frustrated man in marriage, this is where now their wives also come in. These women, they like frustrating their husbands by nagging, by not receiving them, by not treating them well, by not doing services, many services to them. I'm not trying to justify their cheating, but I'm saying that even the women that are married are also having a hand in the cheating of their husbands. Why? Because you're not treating them well. When the slave queens out there offer them a piece of bread, and they also believe that the, the piece of bread that is eaten in secret is pleasant. They are taken into their hoodom and at the end of the day, they are stuck in that pit. Okay, just to make an explanation of how they get to this bread. Verse 25 brings us to the third point, why men cheat. Verse 25. That is Proverbs 6. Last not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. Now there are two instruments that these lay queens or even the side chicks, the way you will call them, but I call them fornicators and adulterers. There are two tools that they are using today. They are using their eyelids and they are also using their beauty. You remember that the, the beautiful, the most beautiful being that was found in the Bible in the book of Ezekiel 28 was Satan. And because of her, his beauty, Lucifer, he went, he was puffed up into pride and into a lot of, a lot of jealousy against Jesus. And that is how he ended up thrown out of heaven. Now these women are using the mind of Satan, using their beauty and their eyelids, by the way. Have you ever seen how these slave queens make up? They do a makeup on, 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 on their eyes, especially their eyelids. They, they put a lot of attractive colors there. Do, do you know why? Because they blink them endlessly at any other prey, any other man that they feel that has a lot of money or even has a, a fat pocket or a fat wallet. This is the, the reason. It is because of their beauty. And how do you look at their beauty? Well, I recently witnessed a, a person looking at a beautiful woman. And as, she, as he was looking at that beautiful woman, he ended up be, uh, <laughs> falling or even uh, colliding with the pole somewhere because of just looking at a beautiful woman. Let me tell you, by the way, this is what the Bible, even the Bible appreciates beauty. You know that many women that are used in the Bible, women characters that are used in the Bible on the side of God were beautiful. Even the ones that were used by the devil were beautiful. For example, Sarah was a beautiful woman. Eve was a beautiful woman. Who else? Jezebel was also a beautiful woman. Esther was a beautiful woman. Now, the Bible has a better way of appreciating the beauty. It is not bad to look at a beautiful woman and appreciate her beauty. But now what you think about in your heart of thinking to sleep with her, or even trying to find out what lies in that beauty you are seeing, that is where now sin comes in. My brother, my sister, we need to, or even the sisters also looking at very handsome men. It is, a, it is a vice versa thing. It is not only men there. That is point number three. Point number four. Proverbs 23. Oh, sorry. Proverbs 20 verse 17. 
Proverbs 20, verse 17. This is what the Bible says. Bread of deceit is sweet to a man, but afterwards his mouth shall be filled with gravel. Wow! <laughs> the bread that is eaten of deceit, which means for a person to go for that piece of bread that the slave queens are offering outside there, after trying to follow, when you are following their beauty, they give you a piece of bread. But this piece of bread, the, the wise man tries to tell us that this piece of bread sudden, suddenly turns to a gravel. Oh, who can eat a gravel? You, a man like me, you that is married, can you eat a gravel with your bare, bare, bare teeth? All your teeth will be, will be removed if you dare do that. So it is because of deceit. And we found out that the person who brought deceit into this world, according to Genesis chapter 3, in the Garden of Eden was Satan. Now they are using the mind of Satan. These side chicks, this uh, it is not only side chicks or even or even over slave queens. There are also even women hunting after other other people's husbands. I have witnessed that several. They lay even traps to them. They just kneel down before them. They know very well that, that they are heavily built. They are created in a very wonderful way. They have their own beauty of their own kind. And now they trap them by, by, by kneeling down when they have a short skirt or even trying to bring their breast closer to the men or even dress in a way that suggests that they are ready for every man. Well, I'll, I'll talk about sanity in dress later. But these are the points of attraction. This is how many men are deceived. And you know very well that there, there, is, there is a research that says that many men are distracted by what they see more than even what they feel or what they think is good. Now, after many men look at their beauty and appreciate that beauty and then would want to, be, to, to find out what lies in that beauty by looking at the many attractive parts, you look at the lips, you look at the eyelids, you look at the boobs. Of course, the ladies of today, especially the snake queens or the side chicks, knows how to do this better, to expose their, their beautiful parts outside there. So that many men, after looking at them, you may last after them, and by lasting after them, you have already committed adultery. That is what Satan knows. And Jesus talked about this in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 28, when he said that when a person looks at a woman lastfully, he has already committed adultery in his heart. And this is the game that Satan is playing, and he has brought also fashion, a fashion that only brings a lot of nakedness of many women out there. Their boobs are out. Even to married women, they have short skirts, they have even hipsters, even the trousers that give their calves outside there. You look at them, you think like, if she looks like this, how will they look naked? Well, I've seen even many ladies today wearing a lot of trousers. And did you know that even a trouser is not biblical? It is a, a men's dress. I will talk about that in another video. But let me tell you, this is the mind of Satan, of seduction. This is the mind of Satan of trying to paint their eyes and uh, painting their eyelids and all that. This is just a character that was found in the Bible history that there are many women who are warish, who entertain guests instead of their husbands to the married. It is also written in Ezekiel. Ezekiel 16 verse 32. Who is a whore? A whore is a person who entertains other guests apart from the married husband. And why do they paint their eyes? They are painting their eyes, their eyelids, and their mouths red, and many other places they make more attractive so that they may attract men. And this mindset is in many women. Even the married women have this. Have you ever looked at a woman looking at herself in a mirror after having, after dressing very well? What, what is the first place they look at? They look at their chest, and they look at their, their their backyard, they're looking at their back. Those are the points of attraction. You, faith, you faithful men, never and never be attracted to those places because they are the places that Satan has put his traps that he may trap you like this and put you into a deeper pit, which is their prison, which is his prison house. 
You need to be very careful. And I will also give you a formula of how to keep off them. The solution comes from the Lord only. I will tell you later. Another point. Point number five. In the book of Proverbs 23 verse 27. Why are men cheating? Why is there a lot of unfaithfulness in many marriages? By the way, here, men are more guilty than women. Because I have, I have seen even women who are living a very dirty lives outside there. But the moment they get into their houses, they settle down. And they don't have, have any eyes for any other. They concentrate on their families and families alone. But men, they are married, their wives satisfy them, they are, their wives give everything to them. But at the end of the day, you find them out there. Why? Because they are attracted with their eyes. There are two things you need to understand. Women are more attracted to touches. That's the reason why many men also use touch to get the attention of women. And men are more distracted to what they see. The research shows that. Now you women, you need to be very careful not to be touched aimlessly, not to be touched anyhow with any man that comes. Keep off. You men, just look, appreciate beauty. Stop it there. Continue. Point number five, Proverbs 23, 27. For a hole is a deep ditch, and strange woman is a narrow pit. She also lies in wait as for a prey and increases the transgressors among men. Did you hear that? She increases the transgressors among men, which means their main aim, their main aim, the main aim of women are adorning themselves with uh, precious clothes and things that are glittering and many different. I have even seen many women having their eyelashes painted purple. Did God create a purple being? Those colors are just for attraction. And if you go to the book of Jeremiah 4 verse 30, you find that they even paint their faces that they may attract and deceive and and even to do what seduce men these are the words that a whole is a deep ditch men let me go deeper let me go deeper let me let me help you understand this verse is a deep what a deep ditch and a narrow pit do you remember that? Can you understand that language? That they are deep and narrow. During the time of making up, what is attracting many men? The narrowness, not the wideness. Now they have a notion, Saturn creates something in their minds that you know this one, those who are tight, those who are narrow, are the better women. I think you know, these are bedroom issues, but I'm talking about things that are under the curtain. And that's the reason why I say that this video should be watched by only married people. But these are the truths. I am not vulgar. I'm just using the right expression to teach the right thing. Many men, when they, they are distracted, they are, they are curious, they go to find out. These women try to be narrow. They try to be deep and narrow so that they may get an excitement during the time of making up. When they are doing that, men feel so good. Men feel so pleasurable to them when they are penetrating. And that is what attracts men. Now when they go back to their women, their women are not, have given birth to so many children. And now you don't expect them to be that, that way. So these, these wars or even the slave queens have, have mastered the art of trying to make it look pleasurable. Remember, the Bible said that the, bread, the, the, the water, the bread of secret is pleasant and stolen waters are sweet. So the side chicks are trying to make it sweeter and pleasant, more pleasant than even your house. And that is where now many men get there. In a narrow and a deep pit, when you get inside there, you'll be cheating from one woman to another. The moment you just get into it even once, whether you are deceived or not, if you are not prayerful, my brother, if you are not very careful, you cannot get out of that deep ditch. 
It is going to consume you. Another point. Point number six. Proverbs 7 verse 5. Now, I think this is, this is a point that now involves other women, also our married women, the way they are supposed to be doing certain things. Now listen. Listen to what the Bible says. Let me read the Bible first before I talk. 7, Proverbs, verse 5 to 27. That they may, they may keep thee from strange woman, from stranger which flatters with, with her words. Number one, they flatter with beautiful words. They call you after, after ensnaring you and catching you in that, in that snare with that stolen water and that piece of bread. They call you honey. They call you beautiful names. While when you go home, your wife will call you Baba. Baba so and so. They don't. They have forgotten that uh, they are so much preoccupied with the activities of the house. They are there to make things, children, uh, clean. They are there to make them do their homework. They are there to cook. They are there to do a lot of work and make the cleaning of the house. They have no time to do all these things by the side chicks. They have all that time. They have no children to take care of. That's why they have all that time to say all those beautiful words that are there to only deceive you. Verse 6, that is what? Verse 6 says that, At the window of my house, I looked through the casement. This is how these slay queens look at people. If they are in the neighborhood, they like looking at you. Especially when you are going to take your bath, they see your chest, they see your shirt, they see you, everything. They investigate you, but they are looking at you through their windows. And at times they deliberately leave their windows open when they are half naked, so that when you look at them, you may start deciding about them. I have seen that also happen in the neighborhood. I have seen that happening in estates, especially the neighbors. That is how they behave. And behind among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding. Void of understanding. A man, a young man that, you know many ladies like young, young energetic men. And especially the ones that have gone to a gym, they have a good body, they are tall, they are dark. You know that they feel that they are strong. And so they feel that they, when they are walking with them, they feel so great. Because when you hug them, they press you into their breast and all that. They feel so good with those your muscles. And you also feel so good when you feel their, their crotches and you feel their, their boobs. And this is how the attraction, the chemistry takes place. And then you feel so good when you go back to hug your woman. That same, same breast you expect to stand as circled many children. The first ball, the second ball, the third ball, or even the fourth ball. Now you don't expect those boobs to stand again. It is, it is natural. It is natural. But you remember that they, that is how they are attracting, the, the slay queens out there are attracting men. And beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths, a young man void of understanding. Those who are going to them are, are, are lacking understanding. And you know what understanding is? If you go to the book of Job, chapter 28, verse 28, it tells you that the fear of the Lord is understanding. Now, if you don't understand, if you don't fear God, then it means you are void of understanding. That means, then it means the young people who don't even go to church, they don't even reverend God, they don't even pray, they don't even praise God, they don't have any other kind of worship in their houses. They are attracted so easily. They are living carelessly there. They are getting into these traps so easily. 7 Proverbs verse 10 says, And behold, there met him a woman with a, with a tire of an harlot, and subtly of heart. Verse 9. In the twilight, in the evening, in black and dark night. Now you see, even they go to the streets, they are going to park. They are called parking ladies. They are everywhere in the street. That is the time when they are going to attract men. Because they are wolves. She is loud and stubborn. 
Her feet abide not in her house. They don't sit in their houses. They're just walking aimlessly everywhere. They are all over the place, all over the estate, all over the streets. They are going there to hunt the hearts of men. Verse 12. Now is she without, now in the streets, and lies in wait of every corner. That is where they go. In every corner you find them standing, walking majestically, cut walking for you, attracting you. I'm giving you a reason why many people are cheats, many men are cheating in their, in their homes and cheating against their, their, their wives. Look at how these, these women are, are, are handling every, themselves. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offering with, with me this day. I have paid my vows. The peace offering, that is the piece of bread that when you follow it, when you go to eat it in secret, which you think is very pleasant, it turns to a gravel. We saw that. Verse 15, Therefore came I forth to meet the diligent, meet thee diligently to seek thy face, and I have found thee. After coming after, after their offering and their vow, they have found thee. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with the carved wax, with fine linen of Egypt. Now look, they have decked their bed. If you've entered even once into the, into the house of a single lady living by herself, the best place they deck or they decorate more than even their sitting room, more than any other place is their bed. And men, when you come and find that there are flowers that, that are lovely, like this one here, and they are so pleasurable, they have perfumes, and their beds are well made. And maybe you came out of your house and the, the blanket was just there, lying down, the wife did not have the, even the enough, enough time to deck it so well, even, even decorate it. The women were not careful about this, because they have a lot of duties. And again, I cannot also justify that because some women also decided to just be careless and they don't deck their houses. Maybe you have a small child, the child has, has peed on the bed and now you compare this to this one, the one that is decked and the one that has a lot of perfume of urine. Which one would you go for? Men go easily for things that are good. Even if they don't say that in their houses, my sister, they are deceiving you. They feel like they like it, but they don't like it. No man likes sleeping in a, in, a, in a wet place. And this is how now you lose them to the slay queens. I have perfumed my bed with Maya, aloes and cinnamon. Hey. You see, they have a lot of perfumes. When you come closer to the slay queens or even the side chicks out there, they are there to hunt men. They are using even the perfumes. Very sweet smell that men would desire to hear more, to smell and follow. When they come to the house, maybe there's no perfume, there's no air freshener, there's nothing like that. The house is dirty at times. The bed is, the smell that you can hear from the bed maybe is that of a urine. And this is the reason why your man jumps out. When they ever sleep to that bed of a slay queen, they will not come back. And you remember the mattress that they also use is a very good and high quality mattress where when you sleep, you desire to sleep there again. And your men will keep on going back there because of there's a peace of mind there, there's a bread of secret, there's a stolen water, there's a good place. They kiss your, your men, they hug them. And you, a married woman, you even forget to, to hug your husband before your children. You don't even receive them. You are oh, you're back. Oh, welcome. You don't even say that. Even a few say that, but when they say that, they don't even hug them. They don't even, even kiss them. Do you even do that? Romance is, is, is not in the, in the houses, in many marriages. And I'll tell you why. These are the reasons. They have perfumed them, they have decked them so well and decorated their beds. Verse 18. Come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. You, did you hear that? Come, let us take a feel of our love. Do you, by the way, did you think even that is love? It is just making up. 
making up with, the, with your husband until morning. Until they forget even to pick your calls when you are so worried about them. And you try to call them, they even switch off their phones. Why? Because they are there in a deep ditch. They are not getting out any soon. Verse 20. He has taken a bag of money with him. Verse 19 says that the good man is not at home for he's gone a long journey. That is how men cheat that have gone for a long journey. Maybe if she is a married woman, she will also tell you that the husband has gone for a long journey so that you may be comfortable and enjoy with her. With her, much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. The flattery of the lips. They flatter you. They tell you, you know, I love you. You are the only one. Beautiful words and deceiving you at the same time. Maybe they detest you, they, only, they are only after your wallet. They are not enjoying being with you. Maybe they kiss you and then when you are gone, they wash their mouths. They go straight away to the bathroom and brush their teeth. Because they are only after your pocket. They are only after destroying your soul. Oh, I wish how you could have been, you could have known how these people behave after you have left. They would even carry your, your handkerchief like this and throw it to the dustbin. They would even wipe their lips after kissing you. Maybe they think, you think they leave you on the bed, they go as if they are going to the... They don't care. They seem not to be caring about you. Your mouths that are smelling. Because I know many men have stinking mouth. They don't know how to take care of them. I have seen many, I have had many men who are stinking in their mouths. But these liquids don't care because they are after something inside your pocket. Verse 26. For she has cast down many wounded, many wounded, yeah, many strong men have been slain by her. You remember the story of Delilah and Samson? Great men were brought down by women. You have seen that. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. Their house is a highway to hell. Be warned, my brother. Whatever you may see as if it, it's, it's so good, whatever you might see with your eyes that is so pleasant and you would want to follow, is a wrong way heading to hell. Listen to what the psalmist says. <laughs> to, uh, the wise man says, not a psalmist, not the psalmist, this is Solomon. 12 verse, 14, verse 15. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. You may think that the side chick is the right woman for you. Because of the flatteries, because of the, the, the decorations or even her beauty, when you follow that, the lips and the body and everything, when you follow it, you are a fool, my brother. The Bible calls you a fool. The way, 12.15 says, says that the way of a fool is right in his own eyes. But he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. The counsel of the Bible is here. If you listen to them, you stop that, what you are doing. The side chick, stop those infidel, infidelity. Stop that unfaithfulness. When you do that, after watching this video, you are a wise man. But those who are fools will always follow that. They think they are doing the right thing. Let's turn also to Proverbs 14 verse 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is the ways of death. Did you hear that? The ways that leads to the side chicks and the, 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 the slave queens and the side businesses, whatever you call them, is just a way of death, my brother. That's why I'm here to give you the counsel of God through the Bible. The last point, number eight. Why are men cheating? Why is there a lot of unfaithfulness in many families, in many marriages? The Bible has another reason. In the book of Proverbs 27, I like this. Proverbs 27, verse 20. 
and it's, it's just explaining the nature of men, how they are easily distracted by what they see. And then I'll tell you how to escape from all this. Proverbs 20, verse 27. 27, 20, not 20, 27. 27, 20. Now listen to these heavy words. Hell and destruction are never full. So he, so the eyes of a man are never satisfied. Hell and destruction are never full. Now the eyes of a man are never satisfied. Now the eyes coincide to hell at destruction and satisfaction. Him that is not satisfied with, her own, with his own wife we can be easily destroyed. And him that is not in control of what his eyes see can easily go to hell. Now my brother, wherever you are, my elder brother, wherever you are, fellow Christians, those who are going to church, pastors, servants of the Most High, in this point it cuts across even to us who are preachers. I have heard of many bad stories about even preachers who take advantage of the flock and sleep around with many women in many houses. God forbid. Now listen. The eyes of a man are never full. The same way the hell is never, the hell and destruction are never full. Now if you, if you are a man and you are, not, you are never satisfied with what your eyes see or with whatever you practically do in your marriage, that it means you can easily get to hell and destruction. How painful. That you are going to get contract a deadly disease outside there and you bring it back to your marriage and then you keep that innocent woman that has been busy with the businesses of taking care of your children. How unfaithful. How can you do that? Well, may God help you. May God help us that he may not get into that way. Because that is the way of Satan. It is a way of a fool. It is a way of destruction. The Bible has said in 14.12 that there is a way that seemeth so right to a man, but the end there of his destruction. Hell coincides to destruction. Destruction completely. Death. My brother, I've talked to you. This, that is the counsel of God. I've left a lot of verses talking about all this that I cannot read just now. But let me just tell you that this is the plan of God, that you may desist from that unfaithfulness, that you may stop today. When you are seeing this, may you stop from it and be faithful to the, to the wife of your youth. Do you know your punishment? Have you ever known that there is a punishment for an adultery? Let's turn to the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 22 verse 32. Or even Numbers 5 19. Whichever will come first. Deuteronomy 22-23. This is the punishment for that way. You see the way it destroys people. 22 verse 23. If a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed to a husband and a woman find her and a man find her in the city and lie with her then you shall bring them both out of the gate of the city and you shall stone them with stones that they die the damsel because she cried not a thing in the city if you go there it talks even about 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 somebody getting to the to, to, to the neighbor's wife and sleeps with some other people's women it cut it did cut across during that time they were brought into open and stone. But today we don't do that. Do you know what God is saying? 
there will be no heaven for you. In short. And there are the people that will be locked out of the city when we shall inherit God's, God's kingdom. Let's turn to the book. Look at the end, the punishment of being an adulteress. The problem of fornication and adultery. Revelation 22 verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of life. That is the heavenly, heavenly kingdom. Number 15, verse 15 says, Without our dogs, dogs there means homosexuals, and sorcerers, those are witchcrafts, and woomongers, and murderers, and idolaters. These are the samples of people that will, will be locked out of heaven. And whoever loves to make a lie, that means anything that is untrue, anything that is unfaithful. So that is just a list. It's just a list of those who will not get into that city, will not go to make it to heaven. Let's turn to another one, another Bible verse. Maybe that might not be clear to you. Go to the book of uh, 1 Corinthians 6 verse 9. Now listen to the list of those who will not go to heaven. This is your punishment if you will continue in that way. 6 verse 9. Do you not know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate or abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Those are the people who will not inherit God's kingdom. Adulterers will not inherit God's kingdom. But God calls you today that if you can hear his voice, you can turn away from that adultery and God shall receive you. That's why he gave his only son, Jesus Christ. He can turn that marriage into happiness. He can turn even your, your, your unhappiness that you so much complain about in that marriage. He can turn it around and it becomes a bed of roses and that marriage bed be not defiled. Remember what he said in the book of Hebrews 13 verse 8, that let the marriage bed undefiled. This is the highest level of faithfulness for to, your, to your married spouse. Now, my brother, drink only from your system. As the wise man said in the book of Proverbs 5, verse 15, we are going to read two more verses of how to be safe. Proverbs 7. Today we will dwell so much. We have dwelt so much in Proverbs. 7, verse 1 to 7. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live and live. And my laws as an apple of thine eye. Bind them upon thy fingers, write them upon the tables of, of thine heart. Say unto wisdom, You are my sister. And call understanding thy kinsmen, that they may keep thee from the strange women. Now if you keep the commandments of God, if you keep the words of God, if you keep every law that God has given, saying do not commit adultery, if you keep them in your heart, it has the power to keep you away from strange women. Whether you see them, whether they are so much attractive, they will not attract you with their eyelids, they will not deceive you. They will not, with their flatteries, they will you not be trapped, my in the, book of, in the book of Psalms 119 verse 11 says that thy word I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. That is what the psalmist also said. That for you to defeat all these things and all these temptations that are coming around head, right, right, left and center, it is only by keeping the words of God in your heart and then you will be safe. May God help you, my brother, that you may keep safe, that you may be faithful, because you are faithful in your marriage, 
reflects the faithfulness to God. By the way, did you know that a husband in the house is a symbol of Christ and the church? Do you think if you are, if you are a true reflection of Christ, you will go out there fornicating and committing adultery anyhow with any other woman that comes around? Jesus was faithful to the church and he is still faithful to the church to an extent that he will take the beautiful and the virgin church to heaven. My brother, may God help you. May God bring you. May God cut that tie of that hole. May God remove the bewitcheries, the witches and the powers of witches, witchery that they are using, the power of witchcraft that they are using to ensnare you. May God break them today in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me pray for you. Let us pray together. Our Father and our God, thank you for our viewer. Thank you for everyone that is viewing this video now. If there is any person who is addicted to any kind of extramarital affair or even unfaithfulness, Lord, that is the power of Satan bringing that person down. We have seen all the tricks that Satan is using today to try to to engulf many men and bring them and rip them off their marriages and steal from them money and all the valuables that they have in their marriages and steal their happiness and rob them of all the good pleasures that they are enjoying in their marriages to bring them to a that dirty and deep and narrow pit that they may not get out. I'm praying for that person who is unfaithful that you may help him bring him back to his house and help him to be faithful to his husband help him to be faithful to his woman because that faithfulness reflects to the faithfulness that we have between us and you lord we are not better keep us still as faithful as we are keep us until the day that you shall come for you shall give us a place in heaven for the bible has said in the book of first corinthians 6 verse 9 and 10 that even adulterers will not make it to heaven. Lord, how, how bad will that be for that man who has been faithful to the, hus to the, to the wife and then one day she de was de he was deceived by that war, by that slay queen and was dragged and brought into the flatteries of this woman, attracted by the highlights and the beauty until they, they are no more. They cannot have their senses back. Lord, help them break those chains. And give them the power to reign. For you have a throne. You have a gift. You have a reward back in heaven for them. Thank you because you still love them and you are calling them today. That you may redeem them and take them to heaven. Thank you Lord for being with us. Thank you for everything that you have done today. It is in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May God Wangu wa zamani mumeze kwa kabisa nimekuwa kiume kipendani ya Yesu moyo ni mwangu kweli na burudi kanina